So we have a bit of an awesome trailer that we need to break down and I know that I kind of already did like a pseudo breakdown with you guys during the live stream but it was just to the point where I was so excited and there was just so much packed into this trailer that I just kind of went off and we were picking out little things here and there but I still wanted to make a video just in case you know there was people that weren't uh, part of the live stream or didn't get to catch that because I actually titled it as like you know a Nintendo Direct reaction and then as soon as the monster hunter thing came on i completely scrapped the nintendo direct and just went to the uh rampage trailer and we started breaking that down and even went to the website and started breaking things down but it was a good time definitely a good time but uh yeah i wanted to go ahead and break down a couple things and take some time to look at the video so we're gonna go ahead and do that so of course we are going to start with the new spider monster and if you were part of the live stream you will know exactly how hyped that i was to see footage of this rachna is absolutely fantastic she has this webbing on her that i would assume kind of like protects her from the heat and keeps her cool but the attacks the using her little babies to attack you and stuff it's so awesome and that's the thing is that I do, I think that these little babies that she throws at you, it's basically going to be the, similar to like a trap effect, but I wouldn't be surprised if they have a little bit of like a damage over time mechanic that thro that's uh, thrown in there as well. And we actually did get a look at her armor and it's fantastic because it's a great representation of the monster and I love when they do that with the armor, you can just take one glimpse at it and know, oh, Okay, that's that monster. When you look at this armor, you're like, oh, okay, that's Rachna Kadaki. Something else that I thought was kind of cool, a little neat, is the fact that when she has the hunter trapped in the webbing and then shoots her flame gas, the hunter does not come out of the webbing. Like, it doesn't break the trap or the webbing or anything like that. So you're sitting there while this fire is burning you. And that's extremely cool as far as the mechanic goes. And I'm wondering if that kind of goes for any kind of other ailments. Like if, you know, something like the Rampage, you have Arachna and something like uh, maybe a Basarios that comes around and poisons you. Are you just going to sit in the trap still? Or is it just specifically to that fire breathing attack that Rachna has? Now that we have a spider skeleton in the game, I mean, hopefully that would make way for something cool like Nursilla or, you know, we have Kezu, so maybe even like Shroud and Nursilla. Either way, it would be great to have Nursilla back. It's a fantastic monster. And you look at Rachna's armor and you can tell that Nursilla's Gundam armor would fit very well because it's pretty similar as far as like the metallic look of it. Next up, we had a glimpse of Basarius doing his thing, coming out of the ground and going against a greatsword user. And I won't lie, Basarius is definitely not one of my favorite monsters, but it's more content in Rise, so I'll absolutely take it. He has a heating mechanic now that was pointed out by Neko in the live stream. You can see here that the greatsword does not bounce off while it's in this state. First it bounces off his head, then when the head is lit up, the sword goes right through. And I'm super glad that they have this mechanic with Basarius because it was just so ridiculously annoying fighting him in Genu and even in For You having your weapons bounce off of him every two seconds, especially in For You because you fight him really early so the best sharpness that you have is like green so everything is bouncing off of him and if it would have had a mechanic like this it would have been a much better fight. Volvedon is back and looking better than ever. Seriously, the Rise treatment did him so well. And seeing as how the Soiled status is coming back, I was thinking about it and maybe now that we have like an insect kind of skeleton, we might get something like the Celtus Queen with the Soiled status combined. And we do have a desert map in the Sandy Plains, so there would be room for desert Celtus Queen as well. So. I know it's far reaching, but hey, I mean, maybe. And the Volvedon armor is looking cool, but I do have to say that the lance is kind of the standout here for me. I love the design, especially the shield. It kind of gives me like that uh, voodoo kind of vibe, and it's really, really cool. 
Now, something else that I wanted to kind of uh, talk about in this Volvodon clip was something that Slam pointed out, and I know that there's a lot of people that were kind of worried that some of the weapons from Worldborn would kind of get the slap-on treatment. Well, now that we see the Diablos Charge Blade, we can see that it's back to its proper unique look instead of the slap-on design that it had in Worldborn. So, rejoice and be happy that we are going to get some really cool looking weapons, especially things like the Anjanath weapons. I'm looking forward to seeing what they are going to look like because I would have to imagine that they're going to get a unique look as well. And then here we get a nice shot of the Sandy Plains. We actually get a good couple shots of the Sandy Plains and just how vast and large of a map that it's actually going to be. And it's nice. It's a cool little head nod to 3U, just like they're doing with the Flooded Forest. And I, I'm here for it. I'm somebody that did not get to really experience 3U. So if I can get that, especially in this HD, I'll absolutely take it. Now, along with that, we do get some shots of Palamut armor with uh, the Diablos armor. We have the Volvodon armor for the Palamut and then the Rajong armor as well. And the last one in the back is a little bit too far. I can't really tell what that is, but I mean, we'll eventually see and I can't wait. Moving on, we get to something extremely cool. We actually get ourselves a new monster in Almadron. And I have to say that I feel so bad for Girototus because Almudron is coming in to make him even more irrelevant and show just how bad of a monster Girototus is and how much of a joke he is, but enough of Girototus and let's get to Almudron. He's something like a master manipulator of mud and can do some pretty awesome things with it, honestly, like uh, kind of make massive pillars, which you can actually climb on. And then while he's making those pillars, you can actually see something like almost like a mud Nova, so I'm extremely excited to see what that is and just what's going to be going on with that. But I do love the look of Almodron as well because they're crushing it with this aesthetic that they're going for in Rise and like the overall theme, and he fits in perfectly because Almodron has that more like old school dragon look, like kind of a la Mulan with like the long whiskers and the beard, and it's great. It's a great look. And we also now know that this armor from the demo and the hammer that they have in this Rampage trailer is from him as well. We can tell from, you know, the colors and everything like that. So his armor looks sweet. The monster is fantastic. And I mean, there's actually a neat little fact. If you go on the website, it tells us that Almodron dissolves the ground with that golden fluid that he secretes or whatever it might be and I love that so much. Now we finally get to uh, the actual rampage itself and they actually give us quite a bit of footage and I do have to admit that at first I thought it would be a little bit too chaotic and too crazy but it actually looks like a lot of fun. The monsters look absolutely massive like that Tetranodon looks extremely huge and I have no idea what like what is going on, but something's going on with this Anjanath because it completely erases this poor hunter from existence with his fire breath. Now, in this footage of the Rampage, we do get to see a couple Silkbind moves that we did not get to see before. We get to see one for the Charge Blade, which I have to admit that this is one of the coolest Silkbind moves that I've seen by far. It seems like it's going to be a little bit tough to line up and land, but when you do, it seems like it's going to be extremely powerful. And now for the hammer silkbind move, I love the fact that you're able to charge this one up and kind of hold it because that's really going to help you as far as the execution and actually making an accurate hit. You know, some of the monsters have those moves that can kind of be delayed and you might get a little anxious, but being able to hold it, it'll make it to where you can actually hit with it. So now we come to what will most likely be the end game of this Rampage mode, which is Apex Monsters. No, not the Apex Monsters from For You that are called the same exact thing and have an extremely similar look. No, these are monsters that are leaders of the pack and are a lot stronger, much like Apex Monsters. Now, I know it's tough for them to probably come up with terms, so I'm going to reach down deep into my vast vocabulary and say that maybe instead they should have used a word like, I don't know, alpha? 
Regardless of what they're called, I'm still excited to take them on, and I'm excited that they're using this on like an early monster like Arzuros because if he's getting that kind of treatment, then that means that monsters like him that are kind of earlier on in the game are still going to be relevant later on and in the end game, which is good. Finally, we come to the absolute badass twins and them gearing up to help stop the calamity. If I had to guess this is going to be an AI system for those who might not be able to or want to take on the rampages online so they can still enjoy the mode offline. The rampage is an all hands on deck kind of affair so I would be shocked if most of the NPCs in the village that are capable of fighting aren't available for you to pick and then you can probably pick what weapons they use etc etc but yeah this is a cool system and I'm glad they're putting it in. Outside of that we once again got an absolutely incredible trailer well put together by the big brains at Capcom. My hype for Rise really can't get much higher than it already is and it feels like these last few months are dragging so bad but we're almost there. March 26th is just a little over a month away, but that's going to be it for this one. If you liked the video, please do let me know with that thumbs up. Discord and Patreon links are in the description, so feel free to join our community to share in your Rise hype and talk some more Monster Hunter. Comment down below what else you think we'll see before release day. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Monster Hunter, Rise, and other gaming content streams, reviews, guides, and more. Have a good night, happy hunting, and I'll see you guys in the next video.